Good morning, good morning. Hey, lady. Uh, I'm doing fine. How you doing? Yeah, good with you. Mm-hmm. Good. Sit down. Could we that better? Just a minute. He must have been acting up. Mm-mm. Don't do that. Put my phone on. Like and share this morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday to you. Today is Monday, June the 10th, 2024. And it just happens to be my mommy's birthday. Yay! Happy birthday, mother in love. Oh, she didn't know her yet. Hmm. Why can you do that? I don't know. Happy birthday to my amazing mommy, Cynthia Mason Kemp. Happy 71st birthday. Yes, I said the number. I said it. They come out this and she posted something on Facebook this weekend holding a seven and a one. So I know <laughs> that she was 17. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday, mommy. I pray that you are having the best day ever. I am so thankful that God um, has allowed you to see 71 years. And I am thankful that you are my mommy because you're the best mommy ever. So, happy, happy birthday, mommy. Why can't I like a shader? Can't like it share, like it share. You already did it. Yes, ma'am. Come on, job. We <laughs> should. You and me keep singing. Mm -mm. I was singing hymns this morning, and my husband was not appreciative of my vocal skills. I'm all appreciative of everything you do. We. But everything, just everything is not just songs to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything, anything, anything for everybody, but. Does that make a joyful noise? Yes, and you, and you were setting the words. <laughs> Again, good morning to you, you and especially you. My name is Minister Shonda Tucker. And this handsome man is my husband. What's your name, husband? Good morning. My name is Mr. Al Tucker. Is Al short for something like Alvin? <laughs> Don't start. My name is Al Tucker. That's it. Is Alvin? Ain't short for Albert. No, Al. Just Al. Alan. No, just Al. Al Tucker. <laughs> he hates that question. <laughs> um. <laughs> He doesn't care for it. Hey, <laughs> the devil. Oh, yeah, I stopped Um, I had a little bit of um, green tea, so y'all yeah, get what you get. Um, we had an awesome weekend. Well, we had a good weekend. Somebody was in the doghouse, they just got out. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, we had a good weekend. And service yesterday was absolutely ridiculously amazing. Shout out to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. Shout out to our church family, Pursuit First Presence Ministries. Shout out to Minister Rhoda P.V. House, who preached her face off yesterday with the rainbow word from the Lord. And it was just awesome. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, please go back and watch it on Facebook, on our Facebook page. It should also be on YouTube by now. Did y'all know we have a YouTube page? So if you miss Monday morning prayer or I get a lot of um, messages from people that say, my friend's not on Facebook, I really want to share this with her, then it's on YouTube. So they can check it out on YouTube at Pursue for His Presence Ministries YouTube page. Also, what's coming up this week? Bible study, Wednesday at 6.30. Don't know who's doing that. Rhoda or... That's Kevin. <laughs> That's Kevin. Somebody do it. Bible study Wednesday at six thirty, and then Saturday mornings we have a prayer call at ten a.m. It'll bless you real, real good. Just call in, listen, and be blessed. Um, Saturday is the men's cookout for Father's Day. 
Um, if you're bringing food and you know who you are, you need to drop it off between 5 and 7 p.m. on Friday so that we're ready to roll on Saturday. Um, so, I thought it was a two, but it might be a one. I don't know. Um, bring your own chair. And you know why. Don't do it. Uh, Sunday? It's Father's Day? Yes. Father's Day is Sunday. Mm-hmm. Bring that same energy y'all brought to Mother's Day. Some good men in your life who are fathers. May not have a good relationship with your father. Mine has gone out to be with the Lord. He was great. But <clears throat> celebrate fathers. Celebrate the fathers in your life. I will be celebrating this handsome man and also celebrating the father of my daughter who is an amazing father and all the fathers in my life, amazing men who have just blessed me. My brother-in-laws are, are just amazing men and I love them. So um, happy Father's Day in advance to all the fathers. I pray that you have the most amazing day ever. It is not easy being a father and... Y'all make it look easy. So bless the Lord for the fathers. We'll celebrate you properly Sunday. Mm. Okay. <laughs> um, anything else? The new, I think. You sure? Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Good morning, else would you get? Hey, J. Reese. Hey, Dr. AJ. Why are you playing on? Hi, Miss Virginia. I love you. Hi, Simone. I love you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, please like and share, like and share. What are we talking about today? What are we talking about, Um, let's, let's i tell you what. <laughs> let's, um, let me give y'all a few, uh, well, since before we get on the topic here. We're coming from Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Um, New King James Version says, Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel parted from her. If we go to the NLT version, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And, and then the angel left her. Uh, actually, what we talked about this morning is second guessing. <coughs> now, how we got on this thing this morning? Made away from what are we talking about? Second guessing. Second guessing. But how we got there, it's me and this one, me and my little wife was talking, talking about, um, I think what the prophetic words are, people do, I, I, people do, I often come up, you know, like, they, they want a word from the Lord, and um, <laughs> it's so funny that, you know, we, it, I hate to say it, but you might have done it before, you know, you, met, you, know you, 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 you got some things going on in life, you want a word from the Lord, so, you go to church on Sunday, we'll talk to the pastor, talk to anybody who gave a afraid of word. No, 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 I, I, I guess I, I need I need to hear from the Lord. As soon as they tell you the word, you get a big question mark on your forehead. Like, huh? How about do that? <laughs> it, 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 that ain't possible. That, I, can't, I can't do that. You know, and we just uh, second guess ourselves. And even worse than second guessing ourselves, when you need for, you think, Lord, I got something. He, he got confused. He didn't mess something up. He got me mixed up with somebody else. The Lord ain't got nothing wrong. It just sometimes we don't want to hear it. And you know that you know and this I I just ain't what we're talking about this morning. Um I've seen times and even I had done this when I was younger too. Please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. But um, you know, when people get worried, you know, you, you see people get going up, go go get a word from the Lord, and you should sit back, I I, I I don't know if I'm going today. They might tell me something I don't want to know. <laughs> You know, I know ain't none of y'all never did that, so we 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 gonna leave that in there. But you know, we also gotta talk about. <clears throat> well, wait. Let's just talk about when we say get a prophetic word. What we're talking about is <clears throat> a minister, whoever, man, woman of God, um, is operating in the gift of prophecy, right? And so you go up for prayer or what have you, and they give you a word under an unction from the Lord. So. Um, it's not what they think. So, uh, a lot of times it may be somebody that you've never met before and they speak into your life. And, and often it's done in such a way that you're like, wow, how do they even know to even say that to me? And it is because the Lord is speaking to them and giving them a word for your life and for your situation. So that's what we're talking about. 
about receiving a prophetic word. The second guessing comes in when you hear the prophetic word and you're like, you know, mm. what? Uh, how did how that happen? So the scripture reference that hubby read was when Mary was first, um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was first visited by the angel of the Lord and told her that she had found favor and that she was going to give birth to Jesus. And um, she she said, how can this be? Because I don't know a man. So basically, she, would, she wasn't second guessing what he said. She was saying, okay, how is this going to happen? Because are you telling me? Um, because she was... Um, engaged to Joseph. So she's like, now wait a minute, if I turn her pregnant now, Joseph might have a problem with this. So what <laughs> are you telling me to sleep with Joseph? Are you telling what what we doing? Because I am waiting to be with my husband who I'm engaged to. So she she asked, that was a valid question, how can this be? You're telling me I'm gonna give birth and I've not done the things that people do to, to have children. So what are you saying? That was a valid question. And so the angel answered her by saying that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and she would conceive. And so after she got that, like, okay, you didn't say sleep with nobody. Okay, good. I got it. Um, she said, be it unto me. I receive it. And so when you get a prophetic word, what you say first matters. I have never received a prophetic word that was small. That was like, you can get $5 tomorrow. It is never, <laughs> it's always been bigger than my capacity to take it in. And we're not talking about any woo, 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 any reading no crystals, any, any foolishness. We are talking about when the Lord speaks to his man or woman of God to give you a prophetic word to encourage you in your situation, right? And a lot of times what happens is we want to wrestle with the person that's given us the prophetic word. As someone who operates in the gift of prophecy, I am not thinking about what to tell you. I ain't even thought nothing about, I have been thinking about him or thinking about our girls or thinking about work. I am not thinking about that. But sometimes when people come for prayer and I start interacting with them, the Lord will be speaking to me to tell them something. And it comes out as a prophetic word. And so what begins to happen is they want me to tell them how to do that. Mm -mm, that's not my job. My job is not to make that word come to pass. My job is to deliver the package the same way the mailman does. The mailman is not like me. You need to put something on this bill because this is the pink one. Like they give a cut it off. They, they don't do that. They just put the mail in the box and they go on <laughs> to the next stop. So my job is not to unpack it. Your job is to receive it and then take it to the Lord to say, now, how? What is this? Instead of saying, I can do that. I don't know how to do that. I remember when I received a prophetic word, um, I had been told a couple of months before I received this prophetic word that my husband at the time, that we could not have children, right? And so... I was devastated by that news and I really didn't do anything with it. I didn't go back to the doctor because we wasn't really trying to have kids. So I, I just, I was just kind of shocked that that news came from my OBGYN. And so I was at a prayer service about a month, maybe about a month or two later, just a women's uh, lock-in service, just enjoying Jesus, watching people be healed and delivered from all kinds of things. Wasn't even thinking about anything, just enjoying the service and um the minister who was um who was hosting the program asked me and one of my girlfriends to come forward and we went up there and the ladies gave the ladies that were praying for everybody gave me a prophetic word that I would have a child um a year from that day and my I didn't say it but in my mind, I thought they ain't the real deal because if they were the real deal, they would know I can't have kids because I had received a word from, not a word, I had received medical information from my OBGYN that I couldn't have kids. And so that had taken root in my mind. And so whenever you get a prophetic word, a lot of people say, I want to hear from the Lord. Y'all hear from the Lord? I want to hear from the Lord. I want, I, want to, I want to hear from the Lord. The thing about hearing from the Lord is great because it gives you wisdom. 
It gives you clear direction. It gives you guidance on a certain situation that's going on in your life, right? So that's a good thing to want to hear from the Lord. But the word says that when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. So you can't say, I want to hear from the Lord. Then he speaks about your situation, but you don't like what he said. Mm. So now, as Hubby said, we like the Lord must be confused. <laughs> <laughs> because when the woman of God told me that I would have a kid, I immediately responded in my mind with the facts. And that is what we do. When the Lord says, I'm going to bless you with a house, we respond of the facts of, I don't have money like that. When the Lord says, I'm going to bless you with a husband or a wife, you're like, I don't know nobody. I ain't met nobody. How's he going to do that? When the Lord says, I'm going to heal your body. Okay, but the doctor just told me he's going to change my medicine because they don't know what to do. We immediately respond with the facts. And the, the Lord is not looking at the facts. He is looking at your faith. The word of God says, according to your faith, be it unto you. So in order to receive from the Lord, I have got to know that he is not confused. That <laughs> what he is speaking to me is Rhema. And, and he is well able to do what he's saying. Okay. All right. So. Uh, you know what? It's, what well, you know, it's so funny. I'm thinking about um, back in 2012. You know, I, I was. I call myself being so for the Lord, and I'm serving the Lord. So I go, I'm still in Virginia, went to, um, went to a service, got slain in the spirit, and, and the woman prophesied over to me, she told me then I'm going to be a minister of the gospel, you know. And you know what? I, I didn't, I did not, I what didn't. What year was that? 2012? This 2012, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, and, and, and it, it, it went in, and I didn't know, and I said, you know, I received it, and then, but by the time I got home, I probably talked myself out of it. <laughs> I said, hold on, no. I, I, I think she, got, she might have been a little confused. But we, and then back in, yeah, what, eight years later, 2020, I think, Pastor Kendra, when she said something, um, I guess she, I think she told Shauna, and before then Shauna told me, when she, she said, uh, Pastor Kendra, you probably been a minister. And, and, and so I, I, I guess I was more received then. I, she, and I, and, 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 cause I, she was more surprised. Like, yeah, she right, as I'd heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is we doing? <laughs> so in 21, I did become a minister of the gospel. But yeah, I mean, it, sometimes, you know, you, I, I, I ain't going to say I was second guess the Lord, but I, did, I, 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 I didn't move in faith when, he, when I first heard it. Because I was like, no, this can't be, that ain't me. Because I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was more worried with my flesh. I, was, that, 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 I, ain't, never, I ain't never want to do that. I ain't. <laughs> And then they, 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 they got me mixed, he got me mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> but no, God, God, but God don't make mistakes. You hear a word from the Lord, we post it, we post the boom. And mm, like, where? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Do that again. <laughs> Do that one again. If y'all are just joining us, we're talking about second guessing the Lord. Whenever the Lord speaks and he gives you a word for your situation and you start responding with the facts. And we use the story of Mary when the angel of the Lord said to her that she would have, that she would have Jesus. Um, she said, be it unto me. And so we're talking about our response is not always be it unto me. We start responding with the facts. Well, I don't have money for that. Well, how's that gonna happen? Well, who's gonna, what, what, uh, and then we start thinking, is the Lord thug? Because why would he tell me X, Y, and Z when he know my situation? It, that, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Either facts or either doubt. Some, you know, sometimes like, I, don't, I don't think this means. Mm -hmm. But um. Oh, that's good too. But but you also said when the Lord speaks, we need to we, we need to move. We need move. we need to move because the Lord ain't making no mistakes. And I don't, and, well, we will talk, talk about this later. Because I don't think when you delay with the Lord, what you do, all you're doing is delaying your blessing. You 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 you, you putting you you're taking too much time to get the way you need to go. Because if the Lord wants you to do it. It, it's gonna happen. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you you can fight against it all you want, but it's gonna happen. 
And the enemy is coming for that word, right? The word says that uh, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He is coming for that word. So the longer you space that you put between when God told you to do something and actually doing it, you are allowing an opportunity for the enemy to come in and do what he always does. Did God really say that? Well, mm. maybe he meant this. Well, are you sure? Well, how are you going to do that? Because you... He, 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 he comes in with doubt and confusion and starts questioning the word of God. And so we sit in that longer than we need to. We, um, I've been saying this term for a while because it's become a lifestyle for me to be recklessly obedient. My, my goal is to diminish the amount of time from the time I hear the word to the point I start moving in the direction of what the Lord said. Because he, he showed me many years ago that that delay, that hesitation ties his hands and it keeps him from freely giving as much as he wants to whenever I'm hesitant or I delay. So you go to church and you, you got a situation and you've been praying about it and the man or the woman of God speaks to you directly about your situation. And instead of receiving that word with gladness, you start thinking, well, well, how, well, what, what, well, man. and then as someone who delivers prophetic words, you start thinking, I'm throwed off. She, well, maybe she don't understand. Well, maybe I didn't <laughs> ask the question right. Maybe. I was not trying to plan a word for you. I gave you hot off the press, whatever the Lord gave me. I'm not that brilliant that I could speak into your situation and know everything that you got going on. I love the fact that the Lord often to me will give me enough so that the person that I'm speaking to knows Sometimes they'll say, okay, you're, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. They will know that it's coming from the Lord, that it's not coming from me. But still, even though the Lord takes the time to confirm that it's coming from him, they will still question the word. They will still doubt it because they're responding with the facts. Um, and, and again, it's so easy to do, but we've got to retrain our mind and retrain our spirit to quickly receive that word. I remember Pastor Kendra used to teach us back in the day that we've got to see faith as a hand in our spirit that reaches out and grabs the word and takes it in. When you hear a rhema word that's for your situation, you got to grab it in faith and take it in. It's, it's no different than digesting it or eating it. That word was, because sometimes you receive the word with gladness and before you get out of the church, you forgot what they said. You, you don't even take it enough. We write all kinds of notes, but do we go back and refer to them so that we're feeding that word, so that we're marinating on that thing, so that we're giving God the space and the grace to speak to us about what he wants to do. I, I've said to you guys before, often the Lord will say to me, can I show you? Can I show you what I want to do? And, and that gives me the opportunity to participate. That gives me the opportunity to make a choice. And I'll say yes. And then he shows me something that kind of blows my mind. And I'm like, that's what you want for me? <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it's overwhelming. But we serve a good father. And his plans for us are to give us a future and a hope. So when he is speaking words over you that edify you and that lift you up and that just seem bigger than anything that you can imagine, receive them the way that Mary did when she said, be it unto me. God, I receive it. God, I come into partnership with you. I come into fellowship over what you want to do in my life. I know what these doctors have said about my situation, but if you say that I am healed, then I receive my healing. God, I know what my finances look like, but if you say that I'm the lender and not the borrower, then I receive what you say about me. God, if, 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 if everything looks like doom and gloom, but you're telling me that this is the day that the Lord has made and that I should be glad and rejoice in it, then I am making a conscious choice to be excited like a kid on Christmas morning every day that I wake up because it's another opportunity for God to show himself strong on my behalf. So I've got to, I get to choose if I want to come into partnership about what he says or about what the facts say. Because the facts are just that. They're the facts. 
but my faith tells me something that is greater than what I see. The word says we walk by faith and not by sight. I've got to know something beyond my knowing. I've got to know that he knows more than me. My mom is on here. Happy happy uh, birthday, mom. I love you so much. Happy birthday, mom. Um, she's 71 today. Mm, okay. <laughs> um, but um, I, I just think she did such a great job of, of giving me the framework that I needed to have faith in her, to have faith in her word was her bond. Even now, if she tells me she's going to do something, uh, she does it. If she tells me she's not going to do something, <laughs> she's not going <laughs> to do it. I mean, even to the point of if she told you you was going to get a spanking, I'll be thinking she'd have forgot. She'd forget it. She's like, <laughs> what are we supposed to be talking about? What you did at the store? I was like, oh, God. But um, if she told me she was going to give me something for Christmas, money in the bank. I didn't have to wonder. I'd be like, Mom, you forgot one of the things I told you. I have never in the history of evidence said that because when we gave her our list for Christmas, now she, didn't, she wasn't real big on us believing in Santa Claus. Um, she was like, nobody came in here. This was... <laughs> us doing this for you but she was I'm going to keep my word to you right and so that created such a great foundation for me to believe the Lord that I don't know what all my mom had to do to make Christmas for us there were some years that I still don't even understand how she did it but she did it if she the word says if, if we being evil know how to give good things to our children how much more the father if, if your earthly parents, even if your earthly parents weren't that great, um, still there were people who provided for you that allowed you to get to this point. And if we can be faithful to each other, how much more the father, when he is making promises to you, this, this is a 66 book love letter filled with the promises of God. Amen. Filled with the promises of God. And <laughs> they are promises that are not just flighty and he just he just happened to put that in there he meant everything that he said that you are the head and not the tail that you are above only and not beneath that you are blessed going in and blessed coming out that he will create a hedge of protection around you a thousand on one side ten thousand on the other all of those things are precious promises from god but i've got to receive them if i don't know what belongs to me then I'm walking around here just letting the world tell me, well, you can't have nothing. You can't do nothing. You can't be nothing. Mm -mm. What does this say? This is the promise. These are the promises that I need to be receiving into my life and trusting the promise keeper to bring them to pass. Amen. Well said. I don't know, you know what, what we're really saying is when, when we hear a word from the Lord, don't don't harden your heart toward the word. Don't don't pump yourself out there. Don't start second guessing, and don't and especially please don't say well, that 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 won't meant for me. Because mm -hmm. the Lord gave you a word is meant for you. I um I think it's Matt it's in Matthew eight. It's uh, I think the Roman Roman centurion when he went to Jesus and said you know he was like um his servant needed healing, mm -hmm. but he had faith. The only thing he had to do was talk to Jesus was done. I think in Matthew 8, 13, it said, all right, it is. Then Jesus said to the Roman officer, go back home because you believe it has happened. And the young servant was healed at the same hour. He, that, 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 that's all things God wants. He wants to believe what he's what he, what he telling us to do and move forward. Because somebody was told you that, look, I got, got a million dollars waiting for you down on, on the corner there. You're going to see. You're going, you're going to see if they, if they got their money for you. They may not tell you. They, they can tell you $50. Oh, let me go get that. Mm -hmm. But 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 why? Because so if, they, if you if you can move fast when it's time to get some money, why can't you move fast when time when, when God gives you a word? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to myself. <laughs> I'm talking to myself too, so uh, yeah, I mean, when, when you, because a lot of people do ask God for a word, and, and what I really love when, when, when people come up and ask for a word and you give them a word, it's when, when they just start praising God so they hear the word. Cause they, they knew, because God answered their prayers. I mean, and, and God had answered so many of our prayers, mm -hmm. but then a whole lot of time we, we get hesitant, don't want to move forward with it. Mm -hmm. So on the day, we, we just gonna stop that. We're gonna stop doing that. We're gonna let God, if that's what you want me to do, that's what I'm gonna do. 
Leave them in the middle. Just being recorded. <laughs> no, I absolutely love this. Um, I don't know when. I, I feel like in a, in, in a maybe in July um, that we will start operating in the prophetic more. And if you want a prophetic word, then we will um, share what we hear the Lord speaking. I just feel like the Lord is laying the groundwork for how this whole thing works that um, he absolutely loves us and he doesn't want us out here uh, second guessing him or, or being confused about what his word says. But how you receive the word matters. Um, receive the word with gladness, receive it with be it unto me. God can speak one word over your life that will change the whole trajectory of your life. And uh, I was talking to one of my dear uh, girlfriends. She is a missionary and the first lady of a church. And we were talking about the fact that people believe all kinds of foolishness. But when it comes to this word, we won't grab hold to it and just believe it wholeheartedly. And I told her, I said, if, if she had a million dollars and she was telling me how to get it, I can see that she has the million dollars. So the fact that she's telling me how to get it, I'm taking copious notes. I'm paying undivided attention to what she's saying because she has evidence of the thing that she's telling me. We're not telling you this morning about something we heard, something our parents taught us, something that uh, we read and, and, and we're just like, hmm, that sounds interesting. We live this thing out every day. And so we take the time. We are extremely busy, ridiculously busy. But this is important to us. And, and we thank God for our pastors who give us this platform and the opportunity to come and to spend time with you on Monday morning to set the tone for your day and for your week because God wants to know that he wants you to know that he's still speaking. He is concerned about what concerns you. The word of God says that his ear is inclined to us. If I'm leaning my ear over to my husband, I really want to hear what he's got to say. God wants to hear from you and not just hear from you. He wants to speak into your situation, but you've got to be willing and obedient. You've got mm. to be open to what it is that he's saying because I promise you, he never says anything small. Like I said, I've never gotten a prophetic word. He's going to give me $5 tomorrow or something small. <laughs> it is, I want to bless you with this luxury car. I want to bless you with a marriage that will blow your mind. I want to bless you with a house that you never imagined living in. I want to bless you with a career that you never thought possible. It always exceeds my expectations, but I want what he has for me. And that's what we want for each of you. We want you to make trusting God and his word a lifestyle because it will just propel your life. You don't have to just exist. The word says that Christ came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. Um, our pastor right now is pregnant with a promise. For years, her and her husband stood for a child. And so every day that I get to see her and see her um, growing and glowing as she's pregnant, it reminds me that God keeps his promises. He keeps his promises. So now whether you believe it or not, she pregnant. <laughs> so it's, it's not about what you feel, what you think about it. She pregnant. So now what? And the Lord told her that she would be multiple times. And he keeps his promises. So this, this is our lifestyle. This is not foolishness. This is not just something to do or something to say. This is our lifestyle. We live by faith. And if the Lord says that we can have it, best believe we're going to get it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that is our wish for you today is that you stop second guessing the Lord. What he has spoken over you, he meant it. And he wants it to come to pass. But he needs you to be willing. And be willing. Amen. Okay. Okay. Again, happy birthday, Mommy. We love you. I um, I, don't know. I don't think I need to operate in the prophetic today, but um, yeah. Okay, you're very. <laughs>
Happy birthday, mother in love. Um, as for everybody out here, just, just stop being hesitant on what, what the Lord wants you to do. Just move forward. I mean, God have great God has great plans for your life. And sometimes we you know we 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 are our own worst enemy. We don't want to move when God said move. So if somebody give if somebody take the time out and give you a prophetic word, believe what God is saying and, and just move forward. I mean, it's sure it might go against everything you think, but God don't God don't make no mistakes. And and also let me let me do this. Um I use my mom for an example again. If she told me again that I was going to get something for Christmas, then I, I, I was confident in that, right? So, do y'all remember when cabbage patches were like you couldn't get them anywhere, and they were just they were just the it Christmas gift? And so my mom had said that she was going to get me a cabbage patch, right? And I can remember having a conversation with this other little girl at school, and she was like, "You ain't gonna get." It. She can't find those. They're 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 not anywhere. And I was like, my mom said she was gonna get it, so I'm gonna have one. And um, I'm, I'm talking big because I know my mom, right? And she, I knew that she was not gonna make me a promise that she couldn't keep. Now again, I don't know who she had to fight in the store to get the cabbage patch, <laughs> but I had the cabbage patch. And so that's how you've got to be in the face of opposition when the enemy is speaking to you. The Lord ain't going to bless you with no husband. The Lord ain't going to uh, pay this bill. The Lord's not going to do, no. Nope. The Lord has spoken his promise over me and it is going to come to pass. You have to speak to those lying symptoms. When the Lord says that you are healed and you've received your healing, but your little foot's still aching, you've got to speak, uh -uh. I am healed of the Lord and I'm walking in my healing. You take your medicine, pray over it before you take it. But know that you are the healed of the Lord. You got to speak to those lying symptoms. Um, when you're praying and standing for your children and they're still acting out. No, nope. the Lord says, blessed is the fruit of my womb. And, and so you got to continue to stand on what you believe. There was some, there was some time right? Between when I gave the list to my mom for Christmas and when Christmas Day came. But I had to believe in the meantime that it was going to come to pass. There's going to be some time for you to have to stand, but you have to be unwavering in the standing, right? Um, the Lord has, has never told me that he was going to do something in my life and happen the next day. I, there was always some standing for that thing. There was always some seasons when it looked like it was as far away from coming to pass as possible. But when it happened, again, when you see Pastor Kendra, she pregnant. There's no <laughs> doubt in your mind. It don't look like she ate a lot. <laughs> she is beautifully pregnant. Glowing. She glowing. She glowing. My husband says she's glowing. Um, and gorgeous pregnant, hadn't been having any morning sickness, anything eating, doing what she wants to do, enjoying her life, and pregnant. So God keeps his promises. You are the healed of the Lord. Your children are blessed. Your finances are blessed. God is going to keep his promise to you. So when those lying symptoms and facts start popping up, you continue to stand on the word of God. Amen. Thank you. You ready? Ready, love, bud. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to open this. Yeah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, dear Lord. Just this thing is day, thank you, opportunity just to praise your holy name, Father God. Father God, we adore you, Father God. We, we love you, Father God. We just praise your holy yeah. name, Father God. Father God, you knew, we knew it. If it weren't for, for you, it wouldn't be no us, Father God. So thank you, dear Lord. Just thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just want to receive your word, Father God. Receive what you want to do, Father God. And just do it, Father God. Your word says, let it be done, Father God. Let it be done to me. So Father God, just thank you for your word, Father God. Just thank you for who you are in our lives, Father God. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we buy and sing, Father God, for any kind of doubt you might put on our mind, any kind of fear you might put on our mind, anything that could keep us from doing what you want us to do, Father God. We just buy and sing right now in Jesus' mighty name, Father God. Father God, just thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Father God, give us faith like the centurion here, Father God. Just knowing that you can speak it and it will be done, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. Father God, we just want to 
love on you, Father God. Love on your people, Father God. Father God, just give that unconditional love that you have for us each and every day, Father God. Father God, let us love on your people, Father God. And Father God, I just thank you, Father God. I just thank you for everybody who's listening this morning, Father God. And people that will listen, Father God. And Father God, I just continue to give them that, that, little, that, mu that little muscle seed of faith that they need, Father God. Just them, hey, let your plan be done in their lives, Father God. Father God, let us don't be... Be, be irritated. Father God, let us don't be get our minds blocked and our ears blocked when we hear your word, Father God. But let us receive your word with gladness, Father God, yes. knowing that it will come true, Father God, because you said so, Father God. Father God, we, we can stand on your word, Father God, and thank you, Father God, who, who you are. Father God, just thank you for all you're doing in our lives, what you're about to do, Father God. Continue. Let us receive your word, Father God. And let us be obedient, Father God. Your word is let us be willing and obedient, Father God. So, Father God, just put in our mindsets where we can be willing to be to everything that you say is, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you even now, God, for what you are doing in the lives of these, your people. God, I just thank you for a fresh anointing, a fresh wind blowing in their life, Father God, that they hear your voice louder than any other saying, this is the way, walk in it. God, I thank you, Father God, that we will be willing and obedient because your word declares if we're willing and obedient that we will eat the good of the land. I thank you, Father God, for being open and receptive to what you're saying in us, for us, and through us. God, I thank you for a rhema word that meets us right where we are. Father, show yourself strong on behalf of these, your people. God, continue to bless us to be a blessing. God, push doubt and fear as far away from us as the east is from the west. God, you are a faithful God. You keep your promises to us, and we thank you, Father God, for this reminder that if you have spoken it, it will come to pass that your word does not return to you void. So God, we make a conscious decision today to be open and receptive to what you're speaking over us, God. And even when we don't know how you're going to do it, we know who is going to do it. Yes, we make a conscious decision to partner with you, God to not doubt God, but to ask you, how can we participate in what you're doing in our life? God, we praise you in advance for the testimonies that will come forward saying that the Lord has done this thing and it is marvelous in our eyes. God, I pray that you would go ahead of us into our day and into our week. God, make every crooked path straight. God, I thank you, Father God, for healing every person under the sound of my voice as Jesus Christ is. So are we in this world, healthy, healed, and whole. God, your word declares that you are Jehovah Jireh. Thank you for being our provider. I decree and declare that we lack nothing, that we have exactly what we need, exactly when we need it. Not because we're so good, God, but only because you are so good. Yes, Father God, we cast every one of our cares and our concerns over onto you because you care for us. Father God, any care, any concern, we lay it at your feet and we decree and declare that we have a carefree life. Thank you, Father God, for sending Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to forgive as freely as you have forgiven us. God, we loose offense from our soul and we forgive everyone of everything. We thank you for this week that will be overflowing with miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes, God, we pray that you would heal our land and we would truly be one nation under God. Father, now this prayer isn't perfect, but your love for us is. So whatever it is we should be mentioning, whatever it is we should be holding up on behalf of these, your people, we decree and declare that it's done and it is done well. In the master's name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, Amen. God bless you as you go throughout your day and throughout your week. If you're looking for an opportunity to sow, Pursuit Fish Presence Ministries is good ground to sow into. Not because we desire a gift, but we desire fruit that may abound on your account. If this word met you right where you needed to be met, put amen in the comments. Share it with someone that you know needs to be blessed. Again, we give honor to our senior pastors, Pastor Kevin and Kendra Blanton. We give honor to our overseer, Dr. Caesar Richburg, and the entire First Family, the Richburg family. We give honor Honor to Mother Blanton, who blessed us with the psalmist, Pastor Kevin. We give honor to our church family. We give honor to each of you. You're not watching this by accident or by coincidence, but God wants you to know, a be done with the, with the second guessing. Receive his word with gladness. Listen, if there's something specific that we need to be praying about, please put it in the comments and we will go back through and pray over each of you. We love you with the love of Christ. God keeps his promises. Get Amen. excited about what he's going to do in you, 
for you and through you. Okay? Yeah. All right. Anything else? Good All right. Have a blessed week. We love y'all. Bye.